My name is Boris Gurevich and my work seeks to create a vibrant interdisciplinary and engaging education and outreach program covering cutting-edge technology for an ever-expanding range of societal needs. Welcome to Seismic Sound Off, exploring the complexities and usefulness of geophysics for the scientific community and the public. I'm your host, Andrew Gary. In this episode, I speak with Boris Gorovich, who provides an insider's perspective on the value of expanding your knowledge and awareness of the wide-ranging discipline of geophysics. Boris currently serves as the chair of the Distinguished Lecture Committee at the Society of Exploration Geophysicists. In this conversation, Boris shares the benefits and primary function of SEG's educational lectures, and there's a strong chance the primary function differs from what you think. Boris provides a helpful overview of this often overlooked free resource. He also shares tips to maximize your engagement and learning and the best ways to get involved for attendees to companies to lecturers. The honorary and distinguished lectures provide an invaluable resource to the geophysics community and the public. This conversation will provide the shortcut to help you get the most out of it. To register for upcoming lectures and find the complete educational archive, visit seg.org slash podcast or check the episode show notes where you're listening. And now my conversation with Boris Gorovich. Well, you're in the in the perfect position because you currently serve as the chair of the Distinguished Lecture Committee. What is the range of offerings for the Distinguished Lecture Program? Oh, we have a range of, of lectures. We have an SEG Distinguished Lecture, a Near Surface Global Lecture, a Global Sustainability Lecture, all of which are aimed to reach a global audience. Plus, we have a honorary lectures for six regions of the world, North America, Latin America, Europe, Middle East and Africa, South and East Asia, and Pacific South. Yeah, we featured a lot of these talks on, on the podcast through the years, and one of the things that's so great about it, if you miss miss it live, you can catch the recorded version and still be able to, to hear them. Do the lectures that you have planned for 2023 have a theme? Actually, no. We strive for diversity in various meanings of this word, including diversity of topics, geography, and lecture background and experience. This is part of the criteria we employ when selecting the lecture from a range of nominees. But if you browse the list of selected lectures on the ACG webpage, you will see that we are trying to select those who push boundaries in terms of technology or applications, especially those directly relevant to global societal needs and UN development goals, such as energy transition or water supply. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty neat. You could just almost listen to these lectures to hear the latest of what's happening in geophysics in a, in a cutting edge way. And next, I, I kind of want to explore the benefits of the program from a few perspectives. What are the benefits of this program from the speaker side, those people giving the lectures to the attendees and companies? Well, although this program is part of SEG's education offering, I view this program more in terms of outreach. Indeed, it's not possible, I think, to learn a subject from just one lecture. I always was skeptical about that. So I more look at this as outreach. And we, we can certainly learn about a subject. We aim this program to be an eye-opening experience for both sides. Listeners can be exposed to new frontiers in technology or applications of geophysical methods, while the lecture has an amazing opportunity to be exposed to a new generation of students or industry professionals, their ever-changing needs and aspirations. Yeah, maybe it inspires attendee to, to pursue a whole different route of, of disciplines in geophysics, maybe, um, from a lecture like this. Yeah, exactly. What would you consider maybe an often overlooked aspect of the program? Well, one problem is that I'm not actually convinced how many, how much an average SEG member knows about the program. I suspect that most members heard of it. Many have seen lectures advertised and maybe even attended one or two of these. But I doubt they know that any member can nominate distinguished and honorary lectures and that the chances of the nominated candidate actually being selected is quite high. Come to think of it, maybe every lecture should include a slide calling for new nominations, just like we include a slide about benefits of SEG membership. Mm, sure. What challenges do you see the, the program facing moving forward over the next couple years? Well, until 2019, most lectures were delivered face-to-face, -face, but since then it has transformed entirely into the online format. 
This has allowed the program to reach the number of attendees we could never dream of in a face-to-face format. It also drastically reduced the time commitment for each lecture, potentially increasing the pool of top professionals willing to share their knowledge and experience this program. But the drawback is that intimacy of face-to-face engagement is lost, and we need to think how we can best engage with people on that kind of level. You know, you had the privilege of, of being an honorary lecturer. What what did you gain yourself by by being an honorary lecturer? Well, I was lucky indeed to be an honorary lecturer in 2019. The last year, the program involved traveling to various parts of the region. I managed to deliver lectures across Australia, Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, and several cities across China. The audience also ranged from undergraduate students to seasoned professionals. I guess I learned the hard way that every audience is different. And ideally, the lecture has to be prepared to tailor their talk to the needs of the specific audience. Maybe I wasn't perfect in that, but uh, I learned from that experience. Another beneficial thing was engaging with some of the students after the lecture, discussing of their research and career aspirations. It is interaction with the audience in various ways that was the most amazing experience. Yeah, so you you have been a lecturer yourself. You're now head. Of, you're now chair of the committee. Would you look at ways to improve the program in 2023, especially given the the continuation of, of the virtual talks? What what would you like to improve? Well, we we're looking at these challenges that I mentioned, and we're trying to overcome them. So to compensate for lack of kind of travel, we are supporting face to face delivery in the lecture's local area, so that doesn't involve intercity or Uh, international travel. So hopefully we can raise funds in the future to facilitate more extensive regional travel, though we will keep the online format. We have to in this day and age and a huge audience that it attracts. Another challenge we will try to address is to engage more SG members to be involved in the program, not just as attendees, but also as nominators and lecturers. Yeah, I love the idea about adding slides to different events. I think that's a great way of, of getting more information out there about the program. And what, what in particular inspired you to step up and serve as the chair for this committee? Well, I was honored to be nominated to this role in the first place. But quite simply, this program is the most valuable tool with which SAG can engage with both current and future membership across the globe. Personally, I've benefited hugely both as an attendee, and I attended many lectures, actually, and later as a lecturer. And it's only natural that I give back to the society in this manner. So to do my little steps to improve the program and to coordinate it. You know, there's there's talks moving forward, obviously, in, in 2023 that, that are coming ahead. But there's also a lot of lectures that have been recorded and are available for members. How how would you recommend people starting to, to get engaged with this program if, if they're hearing about it for the first time or just kind of want to reconnect with what is happening in the program? Well, one way is to nominate a colleague who can deliver a lecture that can be inspiring for students or professionals. Or they can simply get, get in touch with me and I'll direct them how to do that. Yeah, and it can be great just even going over what has what lectures have been in the past and what lectures are coming up to, to get a sense of what is being talked about and kind of what might fit in there well. Do you yourself have any upcoming lectures circled on your calendar? Well, a challenge is that with so many online lectures and webinars offered all sorts of subjects by all sorts of organizations. It's very hard to choose. That's why as a committee member, I have always volunteered to host every SEG lecture we offered, or almost every. Maybe not in the middle of the night, but any other time, a morning, I, I did very early morning and I did in the evening. That way I never missed any interesting lectures. I plan to continue this practice at chair. I mean, they, they often, the SEG staff often call on members to volunteer and I volunteer for nearly every lecture because I I don't I I find it rewarding and not a huge amount of work. Well that that is impressive as as you have alluded to these these happen in different regions of the world which is nice you know SEG is a global society as well as geophysics as as a technical science so it it will be in your local time zone uh, some of these lectures so but you are <laughs> you have probably had some crazy hours to, to support all of the lectures across the world. Is is there, before we kind of go to the last question, is there anything else about this program you would like to share that maybe you haven't been able to say yet? Yeah, I kind of forgot to mention one aspect that we're also trying to pursue. There's a lecture and there's a limited 
Q&A session after the lecture, which is maybe 15, 20 minutes. But then we kind of have a separate office hour, whatever it's called, we are, where there's more free format for people to, to discuss. And uh, they have been quite successful when lecturers and moderators were, were happy to continue for another half an hour or an hour as a separate sort of discussion forum. And it's more uh, less formal. And I think I'll encourage lecturers next year more lectures to do this because whenever I coordinated this, this was really beneficial because uh, at the end of the day, this Q and A with the with the written questions a little bit a little bit limited. So this this is a great way to engage. Yeah, kind of goes to the you know interacting with students and just and just the attendees after in a little bit more casual way. That's great that that people are willing to do that. And lastly here, what principal teaching or point of view has helped you succeed in your field? Uh, when I received this question, I had to pause for thought and a little bit. And I, I think it's some one thing that brings to mind is at some point in my early career, and I, I speak mostly as a, an academic and academic researcher, you know. So at some point in my career, I read the Physics Today article about some advice from an accomplished physicist to junior colleagues and students. Don't just focus on minimally publishable results. Try to tackle really important and challenging problems. Well, this sounded great and inspirational, but how do you get there if you don't know where to start and often like the big picture to know what problems are really important and, and actually trackable? So I guess in the hindsight, you do it step by step. You may be making small steps, but they are directed towards a bigger goal, and that's how you get there, you know? Don't put yourself such a big challenge that you is inspirational, but you ne never know the path to that. Yeah, I love that. You got to feel like you're making progress no matter what. <laughs> so that's that's a great lesson for, for people to have. Well, Boris, I really appreciate you highlighting this program. It's been a privilege to talk to so many lecturers through the years, and I'm looking forward to doing it in 2023. And hopefully this will be the best year of the program next year. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to the members. Thank you. You reached the end of Seismic Sound Off. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want to be the first to know about the next episode, please follow or subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Two of my favorites are Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you have episode ideas, feedback for the show, or want to sponsor a future episode, visit seg.org slash podcast and find the box titled Contact Seismic Sound Off. Zach Bridges created original music for this show. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by me, Andrew Gary at Treasurement. The SEG podcast team is Jennifer Cobb, Kathy Gamble, and Allie McGinnis. Thank you for listening. This is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off. <laughs>